We begin our report with the war in Gaza. As the conflict nears its seven month, world leaders are looking for ways to pressure both Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Hamas leaders to agree to a ceasefire. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and the UK Foreign Minister flew to Saudi Arabia Monday to promote an Israeli truce deal and inject diplomacy to head off the ever present fear of the conflict spreading wider. At a meeting of the World Economic Forum Monday, Blinken said Hamas has been given the power to end the suffering in Gaza. Uh, Hamas has before it a proposal that is extraordinarily, extraordinarily generous uh, on the part of Israel. And in this moment, the only thing standing between the people of Gaza and a ceasefire is Hamas. They have to decide, and they have to decide quickly. Blinken added that Israel must do much more to increase the flow of outside humanitarian aid coming into Gaza by ensuring the safety of aid workers and keeping crossing points open. We will have more on this story later. John Alterman joins us now from Washington. He's the senior vice president at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. John, thank you again for being with us. The Secretary of State... Secretary of State says that this offer from Israel to Hamas is extraordinarily generous. Why, uh, why do you think that is, and is that so? There have been a number of demands on the Hamas side that Israel has, has seemingly come to embrace, including opening up travel to the north of Gaza. Israel was very reluctant to do that. The number of Palestinians released in exchange for a small number of Israeli hostages is quite disproportionate. Israel has diminished the number of hostages it's talking about, and Israel is talking about essentially moving toward a more permanent or, or durable ceasefire. All those things are, are things Hamas had wanted. I assume there are things we don't know about some of the individuals who Israel might release in exchange for release of hostages. Uh, but uh, we're clearly getting to something close that either this works or it's really not going to work and it's going to be very, very hard to get any sort of negotiated agreement. Um, the Secretary of State also said the only thing standing between the people of Gaza and a ceasefire is Hamas. That, it, obviously, it seems to me, is it's obvious it's an attempt to put pressure on Hamas. But is that in tension with the fact that Palestinian health officials said that overnight Israeli strikes in Rafah killed more than 20 people? You know, in other words, if you're trying to get a deal... Are operations being carried out a help to that deal or a hindrance? I don't think that the operations really, if this is something larger, I mean, you had, as, as far as we know, more than 30,000 Palestinians have been killed so far in, in this violence. I don't think that, that Israel's actions right now are going to head off a deal. The, the real question is, each side wants to get the best deal it can get. I think each side is willing to walk away, and the hope of the United States and, and other partners, including Arab states, including the Brits, are, can we get over the hump and can we move toward something that looks like resolving this issue? I think we're very, very close. And frankly, this could go either way right now. Give me your take, finally, John, on the on the Rafa question. Obviously, if there's a ceasefire, that puts it in second position. But you have the president on the phone with the Israeli prime minister. Secretary Blinken said that um, that he does not want Israel to go in on the ground in Rafa. I ask you this, I feel like every time, but what is the level of U.S. <clears throat> US leverage over uh, the Israeli leaders? And uh, can you help us understand that a little better? Because the assumption of U.S. leverage over Israel is behind the college campus um, protests and so much of the discourse here about this conflict. I think the U.S. does have leverage, certainly has more leverage since the killing of the workers for World Central Kitchen. I think that really was a shift. The United States has genuine concerns about the humanitarian situation in God, in Rafah. But I think the United States is trying to use that as leverage with the Israelis. Hamas is trying to use it as leverage in the negotiations. Everybody is really negotiating. The Israelis say that this is their alternative to a negotiated agreement. If you don't agree, this is how the Israelis increase their leverage against Hamas. Again, this is very, very close. It's going to be a game of inches, whether we make it or not. I tend to think we probably will, but it is very close and it really could go either way. John Alterman with the Strategic, excuse me, with the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you so much, John.